let's go back to cluster and deep cluster. Actually, you can think of contrastive learning as sort of clustering or based on the same ideas, but your cluster centers are yourself or the images themselves. Each image is its own cluster center. So there is similarity between the two. And let's, now that there are similarities between the tools, let's see whether we can borrow ideas from one to mitigate the shortcomings of deep cluster. This is contrastive learning. You have an image, you transform it into two different versions, push them through your neural network, get your features, compare them, make similar images similar, make different images different. That's contrastive learning. The other one is swapping assignment between views. This is going to help us with turning deep cluster into an online algorithm rather than doing our clustering offline. That's the method. And I'm going to borrow this figure and go back to it. Deep cluster is offline. Swap is online. What do I mean by offline? When we're doing deep cluster, you need to take your entire data set of images, push them through your neural network, get your codes, which were coming out of cluster assignments and k-means, and use those codes to backpropagate and train your network. But you need to do this over your entire data set. And that's a bottleneck. K-means over the entire data set is going to be expensive. Can you do better? And let's try to borrow ideas from contrastive learning. You have two images or two image features from two different augmentations of the same image. This is Z, Z1 and Z2 or ZT and ZS, where T and S are two different uh, augmentations. You have a set of K prototypes. You can think of them as cluster centers. And you have a matrix here. You're going to have your codes, which are going to be doing your assignments. You're going to be taking these features and assign them to one of these cluster centers. Or actually, these are prototypes. And these are going to end up being one hot vectors. And then if you know your cues, then your problem is solved. You take your uh, features from the teeth trans from the teeth uh, augmented features. So that's going to be Z1. And then you're going to be comparing it to Q2. And you're going to take Z2 and compare it to Q1. So you are doing two different label assignments. And this is where the swap is coming in. And it's going to measure the similarity or the fit between your features and the code. So one branch of your network is helping you give labels to the other branch. And the other branch is helping you give labels to the bottom branch. And it's a symmetric loss. The only problem is the online clustering, which I'm going to explain. How do you actually get your codes? Let's postpone that for a while. You have a transformation. And whenever you see a transformation and the nth image, the notation is going to be XNT, which is the augmented view of image XN. The image features are normalized. You take your image, push that through your neural network, and normalize it. The code is going to come out of comparing Z to the entries of C. So you're going to compare Z to entries of C, find the closest one, or find the most similar one. And then that's going to give you a vector to work with, a one hot vector. You can think of these as your cluster assignments. And then to be precise, this is going to be your loss function, which is simply the cross entropy between the predictions of one branch and the labels coming out of another branch. And in the end of the day, you want to, if you know your assignments, if you know your Q, you know the corresponding C, because Q is just picking out one of these Cs. It's a one hot vector. It's one of these Cs is the correct one. You want to make your representation to be the most similar to that corresponding prototype and dissimilar to the rest of them. And if this is reminding you of contrastive learning, you are not far off. The difference here is that what you are contrasting to are the cluster centers, are these prototypes. And if you expand this term, if you take a log, the log is going to cancel the exponential. And if CK, you write it as matrix vector multiplication, when you're multiplying C and Q is picking out the corresponding uh, entry of C, the corresponding row of C or column of C, then you're going to get that formula above. And you are doing it in a symmetric fashion. 
This term here is comparing ZT to QS. The other term is comparing ZS to QT. And whatever terms that you see here are coming out of taking the log of the denominator. And what you're going to be minimizing, you're going to be minimizing this loss with respect to both the prototypes, with respect to both this matrix and the parameters of your neural network, the parameters of F. The question is, how do you get your cubes in an online fashion? You need to be mindful of the trivial solution, which is the case that every image is going to be associated with the same code. So it's going to be associated with the same C here. And we need to avoid that. Let's take a look at the set of feature vectors in our mini batch or the matrix of feature vectors. B is a mini batch size. Q are the corresponding codes. Corresponding codes, these are one hot vectors. And then what you're going to be doing is first of all, encourage diversity. And this is to some extent helping you come up with uh, non trivial solutions. Try to avoid this problem of having the same code. So you're encouraging that. At the same time, don't be afraid of this trace and Q transpose CZ. This is basically this term here, Z, C, Q. This is gonna give you a matrix because you have different T's and S's. And what you want is you want a diagonal of that T, T here to dominate. That's why you do the trace here and you want to maximize that. You are maximizing the cluster assignment you want to pick out the corresponding cluster, the correct one. That is your entropy. You want to maximize that. At the same time, this is another constraint that you're going to put to avoid having the same code, to avoid the trivial solution, which is basically saying that on average, this is going to give you averaging, you want each prototype to be selected at least B over K times. This is why you have K and B here. Whenever you are multiplying matrix by another matrix of ones or by a vector of ones, you are summing across that dimension. So here you are summing the columns, here you are summing the rows, and that should give you one over K or one over B. And it turns out that there is an efficient online algorithm to find Qs. That's gonna be beyond this course. You are gonna do three iterations of uh, this algorithm and that's gonna give you the corresponding cues in an online fashion. Now that you have your cues, you have your labels, you can train your F and C. Not only that, you can get fancy and look at multi-crop strategies. Perhaps look at portions of your image, smaller views, smaller crops of your image and to global views, which are coming out of perhaps flipping your image or color distortions. And then you can write down a more fancy loss function. In the end of the day, Suave is going to give you this curve here, which is better than Sinclair, etc. Sorry for going over time. For those of you who have questions, I'll be around.